Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, C. Lee B. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. If you missed yesterday's episode, today is my last video for this week. Ashley and I are heading back home, so we'll be cleaning, packing, and driving across the country. The next time you'll see me will be Monday, December 18th. First up today, we have an update from Cox Automotive. The average transaction price for a new vehicle November of this year, $48,247. The incentives for new car purchases hit a new high for this year, climbing above 5% of the average transaction price for the first time in more than two years. The luxury share of the US auto market surpassed 20%, a record high. Cox Automotive is suggesting that the new vehicle market is shifting to a buyer's market from a seller's market, and I would point out really the driver in these lower average transaction prices is actually the incentives, not lower MSRP prices for the vehicles. On this chart, the blue line shows us the average incentive percent of average transaction price. So yes, it is shifting, but we're definitely not yet back to pre-COVID levels. The incentive percentage for luxury cars was even higher at 8% for the month. The average price paid for a new EV in November was $52,345 dollars up from 51.7 thousand in October. EV incentives reached their highest point of 2023 at 8.9% of ATP. A director from Cox Automotive said in recent months price parity between EVs and ICE has almost seemed possible. Newer products and higher discounts have brought down average EV prices even before potential tax incentives. One year ago the EV premium was more than 30%. Today, it's less than 10%. We do need to keep in mind when it comes to the ATP for electric vehicles, Tesla's gonna play a big role in that number given that they have over 50% of the EV market share in the US. Year over year in November, Tesla's prices have been down 20.5%. But it's also true that they were coming from embarrassingly high levels. Those were Elon's words. No matter how you slice the data though, over the last year, the EV price premium has come down significantly. The main Tesla account on X is now involved in the FUD fighting long form content game, which is something I'm sure most of us love to see. Just so you know, this is the main accident involved in this case. A driver of a Tesla went right through this T intersection, hit two people, one of whom tragically died. And Tesla is fighting back against the Washington Post, which remember is owned by Jeff Bezos, saying it's egregious in its misstatements and lack of relevant context. The gist of Tesla's argument is that the anecdotes in the Washington Post article significantly talk about driver misuse of Tesla's system. Tesla did share safety data on its ADAS features, but we've been over that already before. They added context to the misreporting of the Washington Post in what's actually alleged in the pending lawsuit. You can pause and read all of these points if you'd like. I just want to highlight the one, number five. The Tesla driver did not blame Tesla. He did not sue Tesla. He didn't try to get Tesla to pay on his behalf. He took responsibility. The driver later testified in the litigation he knew autopilot didn't make the car self-driving saying i was highly aware that was still my responsibility to operate the vehicle safely the post article failed to disclose autopilot restricted the vehicle speed to 45 miles per hour based on the road type but the driver was pressing the accelerator to maintain 60 miles an hour when he ran the stop sign and caused the crash. It really is an unfortunate, sad story, but as we always say, at the end of the day, the driver is still always responsible, period. We've said now for years that this was going to be an unfortunate part of the journey to true autonomy. There's going to be mishaps along the way. At this point though, it's good to see Tesla finally defending itself publicly and pushing back against at least some of the disinformation out there. I thought this was a nice workaround for Tesla in Sweden when it comes to the license plates, not being able to get them through traditional means. Now they're actually working with the customers. In this case, they're being sent to the company's address, bypassing the traditional routes altogether. Another workaround from Tesla, we heard that the Danish dock workers were joining in on the sympathy strikes, but not the Danish truck drivers or some other truck drivers in the Netherlands. So effectively, we have Swedish truck drivers missing out and 
and some in Denmark and the Netherlands stepping up. Honestly, I tip my cap to Nikolas for all of his reporting on this situation. This story was pretty wild. A Tesla owner reached out to share this story. Long story short, bought a Model Y after about three weeks, he was rear-ended and needed some repair work. Everything was set up for the repairs to be done. The parts were there, insurance was going to pay for it, it should have been fine. But then EF Metal changed its mind saying that no Tesla cars could even be worked on at these independent repair shops, not even a Tesla service center. Meaning this Tesla customer's car has now been held hostage for weeks. The Tesla owner said, we have not ordered any work from Tesla. It's ordered by a completely independent workshop. His car in reality has been seized by EF Metal. It really is wild what these unions are willing to put innocent customers through. Have a quick listen to an excerpt of a Tony Siba podcast back in May of this year. Yeah, I mean, this year, um, you know, EVs may well achieve 40 to 50 percent this year, meaning 2023. Um, wow, in, in China. Yes, yes. So, wow. Yeah, so. And how did things actually turn out? From Bloomberg, sales of new energy vehicles climbed 40% in November to 841,000 units. Sales of all passenger vehicles totaled 2.08 million, meaning 40% of vehicles sold in China are NEVs. Credit to him yet again, he's been right on so many things in the past. He doesn't have a big following, he's not a social media guru, but definitely somebody that when he speaks, we would be wise to listen. Shout out to an electrified community member of ours, PN Katia, who said, quote, If it weren't for your Vessi mention in your videos, I would have never known about them. But after buying a pair, I cannot imagine living without them. End quote. Vessi is the sponsor of this episode, so let me just show you some of the new Vessi products I've been rocking lately. The everyday classics are still my go-tos for just about anything. Keeping up with my wife in the mall is a much easier and more enjoyable task with these. We've been in Florida to avoid the snow for a bit, but just picture me back up north clearing my driveway in these Alta high tops. The traction is serious and the inner lining feels awesome. Bessie also has you covered up top with their waterproof gloves that are touchscreen compatible. The Soho sneakers are a way to class it up a bit, and yes, they are still waterproof, and just like other Vessies, they have removable insoles for custom inserts. Even in Florida, it's getting chilly on some days, and the overcast jacket has come in handy on more than one occasion. I'm also a sucker for zipper pockets. I've honestly been pleasantly surprised with every product I've gotten from Vessi and my wife loves them too, which says way more than you know. You can check out Vessi.com slash electrified linked below to get 15% off. Enjoy. Tesla's weekly China insurance numbers came in. They were revised up the latest number 15,400. Plugging that data into the table, comparing it to the same week in quarter three, that number was 10,700. So through the first 10 weeks of quarter three, we were at 111.7 thousand. Now over the same time period in quarter four, we sit at 119.9 thousand. I added this section below it in green. The best quarter for domestic China deliveries was 156. 6.6 thousand in quarter two of 2023, which means for Tesla to set a new record for domestic deliveries over the last three weeks of this month, they would have to average a pace of about 12.2 thousand per week. It's certainly possible. It'll just boil down to how Tesla chooses to handle its export allocations. If you go back and look at the last few weeks of quarter three, you will see the numbers did trail off for two of the final three weeks. For the last five weeks, the Model 3 Plus number has stayed steady right around 3,300 and this month Model Y was at 12,100. What that means though is if this production number for November is accurate in that 35.8 thousand Model 3s were produced during the month, that means a significant of those are still destined for export. Just for the month of December, BYD has been offering discounts on its vehicles of anywhere between one and 3,000 US dollars. Just in case any of your friends or coworkers show you this video, bring it up or ask about it, wanted to provide some extra context for what was going on here. A user on Facebook said there was a software issue which caused the rear brakes to not act like lockers, the Cybertruck had the wrong tires, they were not aired down, and it was a prototype model so it had no recovery or pickup points, 
it was recovered using the suspension. It was clearly a release candidate vehicle. And don't forget when it comes to off-roading, driver input has a lot to do with how things go as well. You'll undoubtedly see people using this video to make their argument that the Cybertruck is going to be a failure and it can't do real work. So just wanted you to be armed with some of those counterpoints. The Tesla configurator is now officially live in Qatar. Qatar is a pretty small market. New vehicle sales in 2022 were 56.6 thousand units. Tesla's largest purpose-built service center in North America is coming to Vancouver. They'll begin construction quarter one of next year. It should be completed two years later in the first quarter of 2026, taking longer to build than Giga Shanghai. Either way, this facility will include servicing, vehicle preparation, delivery operations, and a showroom. It sounds like Elon Musk is going to be a special guest at an event in Italy that is known as Atreyu. They're also saying Elon will speak and be interviewed later late Saturday morning. Elon did confirm this visit over on X. Tesla Europe and Middle East posted about the Model Y saying now it's the best selling car in a single year ever, beating the previous record set in 1986. The 1986 record is coming straight from the archives and was not publicly known before, but Model Y beat them both. I did a few minutes of digging to try to figure out what the record that was broken would have been, but no luck so far, I'll keep you posted. Panasonic and Sela have announced a new partnership for Sela's high performance nano composite silicon anode. This is welcome news for a few reasons, one of which is that these anode materials will be manufactured in the United States in Washington, and they'll be optimized for Panasonic's next gen lithium batteries. If you ever see Titan silicon in the media, they're referring to the technology from Sela, who has also signed a supply deal with Mercedes-Benz for their upcoming G-Class EVs. There are claims out there that this could boost EV range anywhere between 20 and 40%, but as always with battery tech, let's see what happens in the real world. This is, however, supposed to be the first market-proven alternative to the graphite anode, and we know that Tesla works with Panasonic, so in the future, is this a technology that Tesla could ultimately start deploying? Maybe. We still don't know what the final Porsche Macan EV is going to look like for next year, but the full reveal is expected by January 2024. What we do know though is the vehicle will have two AC charging ports on both sides of the vehicle and a DC port limited to one side. It'll use prismatic cells and have a gross 100 kilowatt hour battery pack that's set to get up to 310 miles of range, but that's not from the EPA yet. The car is expected to start around $80,000 and it should be manufactured in Germany. All Macan EVs destined for the States will get an air suspension. It'll have an 800 volt system allowing it to charge up to 270 kilowatts and just like the Cybertruck when it comes to 400 volt charging it'll split the pack into two separate units. The Macan EV will run on an Android based infotainment system and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will be better integrated. The 0 to 60 is expected to be around three and a half seconds and it should go on sale in the summer of 2020. Shout out to a community member of ours, First Principles of Fun on Instagram. His account will be down below. Look at these pictures of the Cybertruck. Just wanted to tip my cap to him, and I will say these photos would probably make for a pretty nice phone background. A Mexican source reported Tesla now has the permits it needs to start construction of Giga Mexico. In the video, the subtitle said there's no estimated date for the first stone to be laid, but it would be as soon as possible, perhaps in a few weeks. There could also be an announcement in the next few days about an official start date. The real question becomes, do we have our drone pilot yet? The Department of Transportation said today it's launching a regulatory effort aimed at eventually mandating technology to prevent intoxicated drivers from starting vehicles. The US DOT has until November 2024 to set a technology safety standard. I do not think it's likely, but wouldn't it be nice if FSD was solved by then? VW's EV truck brand Scout is looking to spend around $11 million for an R&D center in Detroit. This will help them create the products that will eventually be built at their factory in South Carolina, hopefully by the end of 2026. Right now, Scout has 300 employees and plans to break ground on its assembly plant in the first quarter. Hopefully VW has their software issues figured out by the end of 2026.
Volvo has launched over 50 DC fast chargers at 15 different Starbucks locations, but they're not future-proof. Volvo did already commit to adopting the NACs, but it seems like this initiative with Starbucks is going to focus on their current iteration of EVs. That's because these stations will be equipped with CCS1 or CHAdeMO connectors. Volvo will use charge point equipment, some of which will do up to 350 kilowatts. For now, these locations are only in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, and Colorado. I wasn't able to track down a source for this one, but historically Alex has been reliable in my experience. The Volvo CEO said we will be among the first of the traditional companies to break even and report decent e-car sales figures and profit margins. I promise you, we will be the only ones to come close to Tesla's figures in this respect. Tesla Megapack posted, congratulations Megapack team on 12 gigawatt hours of operating industrial storage at 99% availability. In my opinion, the Megapack may be one of, if not the biggest drivers of profitability for Tesla over the next few years. That is of course, if FSD is not solved in that time frame. And while 12 gigawatt hours is a great start, don't forget we literally just talked about how the U.S. Energy Secretary was talking about tens of terawatt hours being needed just in the United States alone. I saw Sawyer post about this website, comparethemarket.com.au. It's been using Google search data to find the most searched car brands year by year, and Tesla is moving up the ranks quickly. Tesla has gone from not making the rankings at all in 2022, which I do find surprising, to second place in 2023, with 29 of 155 countries listing Tesla as their number one car brand in Google Trends. This shows how many countries the brand was ranked number one for in terms of search volume. From 2018 to 2020, Tesla wasn't even on the list. In 2021, Tesla had five countries where they ranked first. Fast forward to this year, they've shot up to number two with 29 countries making Tesla the most searched brand, trailing Toyota with 64 countries. I cannot vouch for the reliability of this source, but I had never seen it before. And if you're interested, I will have this link below. A user on the Rivian forum just picked up his Rivian from the service center after getting the powered tonneau cover installed. We've known that the Chevy Bolt was moving to the Altium platform around 2025, but it's just going to be the EUV version, which is a little bit bigger than the smaller variant. That's most likely because GM officials confirmed that the Chevy Bolt EUV far outsells the standard Chevy Bolt EV, somewhere in the neighborhood of two to one for today's sales. If any of you need a little light humor today, go on X and look at some of the replies to my reply on this Cybertruck post. A surprising number of people must have missed this part of the post. Don't forget, check out Vessi linked below, take advantage of the discount, maybe grab something for a family member or a friend. I'm very confident you will not be disappointed. Don't forget, you'll see me again Monday, December 18th, barring any unforeseen situations. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and the rest of your week. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.